now, welcome to Motor Mouth. On this very auspicious occasion, the televising of the first ever Cardboard Cup final. Atmosphere down the pitch, quite electric at the moment. I have with me footballing expert Frank Sidebottom. Frank, uh, how are the players feeling just at this moment? Uh, they're up to Jupiter, Brian. Absolutely, very much so. Well, obviously, the cacophony of stars have gathered to see this match. And if you look through the grandstand, you can see a famous face every second person. My goodness me, who could that be with Gabby Roslin? No, it's surely not. Good morning. Yes, I'm very pleased to say we have Kylie Minogue in the studio. Kylie, what do you think the score's going to be in oh, the match? Could you give me just a little more time? Oh. Oh. Corny gag, number one on no to mouth. Well, there'll be plenty of corny references and as many uh, contrived commentators to references as I could get in as well this morning. Like uh, the state of the pitch, they always talk about that, don't they? And our pitch is looking quite marvellous. That's doubtless due to the efforts of our wonderful grounds with Mr. Steve Johnson. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. Well, it looks like we've had a bit of a worm invasion. But I've got a brilliant idea with something we could do with them later in the programme, and that isn't eating them. Back to you, Andy. Do you like worms? Do Very like much so, yes. Well, I wouldn't be quite so sure about that. You wouldn't be able to see the program without the fantastic camera work of our boys. And uh, head of cameras this morning is Neil Buchanan. Oh, yes, thank you, Brian. Yes, now, if you thought that camera work was very good down there on the pitch, you ain't seen nothing yet. We've got some wildlife camera work later on from Tony Shepard, and we'll be going behind the scenes and see some of the tricks of the trade. But uh, now, I think things are hotting up down in the stadium, so back to you, Brian. Thanks very much indeed, Neil. Yes, we're yeah. just moments away now from kickoff. Oh, uh, the players are uh, electric. The you could cut the atmosphere with a knife down there in the stadium. Oh, some scissors. Very much so. But before the kickoff, this is what else is on the program today. We kick off at uh, 9:35 with the Scooby-Doo cartoon. Scooby-Doo oh, Scooby is called the B Team. I'm going to oh. drop the silly voice now because I want to tell you that Mousetrap is back. Yeah. Oh. By popular demand, especially by Steve Johnson. That's back at 10 o'clock this morning at 10:15. Genesis, you like Genesis, don't you, Frank? Yeah, they're the super subs, aren't they? Yeah, they'll be. They may be making a late substitution from them. Certainly. Yeah. Well, Beetlejuice is very much a cartoon of two halves this morning. Yeah. The first half of our story is at half past ten. The second one comes a little later. But at, at the 10, end 15, of the day, at it's the end of the day, night, isn't it? Tony Shepard is an excellent wildlife cameraman. See his work at 10:50 when he talks to Neil. Live in the studio, Miss Kylie Minogue performs her brand new Kylie Minogue. Life. Kylie Minogue. I kid you what, not. The real one. The real Kylie Minogue. Oh, Give me just a little more time. At 20 past 11, you can meet a real live film star, Danny Newman. Does my hair look smooth? Your hair looks lovely, oh, Frank. Lovely. And at 11:25, our playout number this morning, live in the studio, we are joined by Cicero. And the boys. Right, Can well, we're approaching kickoff time now, so I can appoint myself referee and start to pick team captains. And the first team captain this morning is Little Frank, so I'll be playing for Little Frank now. Who else should I pick? Hey, Who? Mr. Max! Mr. Max! No, that's a good Get idea. Yes, little here. Frank can no, play no. Max. No, he's not playing him. You can be the bold boy. Make yourself useful. Go and get them balls. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're going to play me. All right, then, fine. Okay. Cardboard cup. The cardboard cup final. Little yeah. Frank against Big Frank. I will obviously flick for Little Frank. All right. And as the referee, we will kick off. Are you ready? Okay. Are you kicking go. off? One, two, hey, hold on. three, four. Frank! Hey, look, they break dead easy. I'm sorry, penalty there to Little Frank for a, a intimidation of his players. An absolute hey, penalty. Hey, hey, penalty hey, hold on a there, minute. Please. We've not got my proper team here. Here's my team. It's a late substitution Eddie by Frank Bruce here. Bruce Dover Dover are in goal. In goal. <laughs> right, we're ready. I doubt it. That's a bit big. To some fantastic forwards <laughs> who take the ball up a bit. No. Hey, look out! It's Skeletor on the wing. <laughs> Subutio Skeletor passes through to the Palomino horses. It's I'm going to have to penalise you there, Frank. There are two Palomino horses. And here horses. comes Noddy! Noddy's the forward. Noddy's through. Noddy is the goal! Yeah. With the owner of a small yellow oh, two-seater, registration NOD1. Please move it from the players' car park because Mr. Plod says he's going to clamp it. That's not his car. He'll have to go off. I'm sorry, right. Well, you've obviously lost one of uh, one of your players, and oh. as the others are far bigger than the others, and you're obviously cheating like mad. I declare the match null and void. It's a penalty shootout to decide the location of the uh, cardboard cup. Hey, hold on a minute. No, no, no. Let's add a bit of glamour to football. Fine. You know, like they do that Mexican wave. Yes. Let's do a timpley one. A timpley wave. You think we are can manage ready? a timpley wave? Right, one, two, three, go! <laughs> hey, that's good, isn't it? Spectacular. Right, back to our penalty no, shootout no. then, Frank. Let's not do it here. Let's do it over here on the proper football pitch. What, right? a proper penalty shootout? Yeah. Between, between you and penalty little Frank. Shootout. Right, I'll take one against him. Put his goalkeeper Hang on. on. Right. Well, obviously, Frank's going to change into his... Now, also... Into his goalkeeper's outfit I'm here. I'm going to be adding a bit of special effects 
to razz it up a bit. Now. All right. Okay. So if I score, yeah. there's going to be some fantastic special effects. Are you ready? We'll put little Frank in goal. Right, no helping him. I'm not going to help him. And it's tense here. Are you ready? Come on, cheer me up. Yeah. Oh, Frank has scored! That's incredible. Frank has scored, right? Brilliant. Well, little Frank gets to take a penalty against you now. Right. Can I have special effects? What? Can I have some special effects? No, you can't. I've used special effects. I've got a glitter cannon. Glitter cannon. You've got to score first. Let's see if he scores. Well, I might have to give him a bit of help here. He might right, have to actually no. use his head. Hold on. Before you start, let me just get me wall ready. <laughs> right. I've got my defence. Right. So little Frank wins the cardboard cup. No, 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 no. I tell you what, we'll share it and you can have it on Tuesday mornings. All right then. I'll get the cup. Right, here we go. You go and get the fantastic uh, bus and we'll, we'll drive round Timperley. <whistles> and as he holds the cup on high for everyone to see, here comes the bus for everyone to get on. Oh, guess who's been? of the day I have in the big shorts guess who's been a match of the day I have in the big shorts yes I've been on match of the day because I've got the big shorts oh guess who's been on match of the day I have in the big shorts guess who's been a match Bottom, and guess who's been on match of the day? You were a well deserved winner of the Cardboard Cup final. Thank you, boss. Frank, look into there and say, Is Scooby Doo? Oh, here's Scooby Doo. More Scooby Doo next week, working with Frank Sidebottom. It's almost as bad as working with Steve Johnson. And may I say, Steve, <laughs> what a superb job you've done of repairing our table after last week's little incident. It almost looks newer than new. Oh, thanks a lot, Andy. Do you really think so? No, I don't. It's a shambles, and so are you. You're a disgrace. Hey, hey, hey. You know what your problem is, don't I do, you? yes. I'm looking at it. There's no need to get personal. I tell you what it is, you've got no vision, mate, no imagination. When I throw my artistic eye over this table, I can see millions of possibilities. Throw your artistic eye? You couldn't throw a stick for a dog without breaking something. You're a pest, Johnson, a nuisance. I think that's a bit harsh. Hey, accidents can happen to anyone, can't they? You all right, <laughs> See what I mean? You're a jinx, that's what you are. Here. Wear this. Hey? Keep away. I am bad news. Oh, oh, look, the strings come off. Will you stop messing about? Just pass me those letters. No, 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 no. I'll get them myself. <laughs> oh! <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry about that. <clears throat> hey, look, I wasn't anywhere near that, was I? You can't blame me for that, can you? Look, here's a cloth. Thank you. <clears throat> can we get on now? In your own time, mate. We'll start with the requests for Steve's brains, which are a little damp now, you will appreciate. <laughs> to Steve from Carol Louise Jones, please can I have a can of your brains so that I give my sister a massive operation and replace her brains for yours, because she's always calling me names. We will send you a tin of brains, especially because you sent us that rather fine picture of Mr Elton John. <laughs> <laughs> It's got more air than him, though, yes. hasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. A tin of brains is on the way to you. This one's come from Chantal Russell, who's written to us from Birmingham. It says, Dear Steve, I am a loony. But if you give me a tin of your brains, I'll be very pleased. And she sent us a picture of herself when she is a loony. Lovely. She looks one. Tin of brains for you as well. And finally, who's this one from? It's from Danny Horton, who's 14. Hi, Danny. 
Hi. Dear Andy, I have sent you a thousand pounds for a tin of brains. We'll send you one of those, but I have also sent an extra fifteen pounds for a new shirt after last week's little incident. Well, that actually does happen. And a toy gun that could be useful to shoot Steve. Yes, hey? it might very well be. Listen, tin of brains coming on the way to you. Do you think you can handle the embarrassing photos on your own? Oh, with a plum. In fact, with two plums. Get on with it then. All right then. How about uh, this one here from Owen and Ryan Phillips? They say that's their dad, <laughs> and Mum says our Shame. days are numbered. Whatever that Shame. means. And how about this one here from Elizabeth Haddon saying, I know you'll never show that on British TV. Well, we're not going to. And, um, hey. Oh, well, that's Andy Crane at a book festival looking incredibly pompous. Oh, what's not? I was discussing my life as an author. Hey, what? can you smell fish? Nah. I can now. <laughs> hey, I tell you what, isn't it time for that viewer's animation? I don't know, Steve. My watch has stopped. I'll give it here. I might be able to fix it for you. What, are you really? Can you do oh, what? Yeah, you watches. Do, like, Yuri Gallo of Children's Telly, me. No, I think it's broken. <laughs> <laughs> You're lucky this is a family program, Stephen. Look, are you going to do the viewer's animation or what? Because I'm getting bored. You see, all right, here. all right. Time now for this week's viewer's animation. <coughs> when? Now. Is it? The tale of the little yellow sad thing. This is by Christopher. It's quite a sad story, Steve. Look, his girlfriend gets nicked and his heart gets broken. Oh. It's, oh, it's a shame, isn't it? It's happened to me, that. <laughs> Many times. I oh, know. <laughs> hey, are you going to give the address now? If it's OK with you. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just uh, take yourself away on that one there. But, um, <clears throat> well, I think you'll probably be better off putting one of these on. Don't be ridiculous, Steve. Well, I'm going to wear mine. <sighs> <coughs> yes, if you would like to send us uh, a request for brains or an animation or an embarrassing photo, this is the address to send it to. Usual Motormouth address. It's Motormouth, <coughs> P.O. Box 1, Maidstone, Kent, ME14, 5 L. Motormouth, P.O. Box 1, Maidstone, Kent, ME14, 5 L. And we look forward to hearing <coughs> from you. Steve, you look absolutely ridiculous. Well, I just think that I've got this. Oh. <laughs> oh, Andy! You splashed me suit! I'll tell you what, mate, what you need is one of them cocktails. Oi, Ray! <laughs> well, it's just not your day, is it, Andy? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Nigel, you're a riot. <laughs> hey, I'll see you around, okay? <laughs> Nigel? Hmm? Nigel? Paul, I usually collect the post. Yeah, but I got a special delivery, personal package. Yeah, well, that's all fine and, fine and dandy, Paul, as long as you remember you're here primarily to work. I believe Tony Shepherd is on your agenda for today. Correct, but he's not here yet. And the only other thing I have to do is the worms. Speak Don't mention that. that word. You do know that I have an aversion to hermaphrodites. Hermaphrodite? Oh, asexual reproduction. And don't swear. Hi. Hi, Dan. Yeah. Great to meet you. Yes, yeah, sorry Love about being late. It's, um, no problem. Right away. That's no problem. Listen, uh, let's find out who's looking after you. Millie Bates. Aren't right. you the lucky one? I don't know, am I? It's all right if you can fix me up with Carly Minogue. There's ten p in it for you, you know. I'm not here to organise your love life. Go and wait in your dressing room. Get out of my way. Now, I'm not normally a violent man, but there might be some football I'd throw with you later. Like, your chance. You know when they were hanging in the All right, there's just a wire on my back. Yeah. yeah. Oh, look who it is, back. Eddie Munster. No, just kidding. I saw that film. Yeah. And uh, quite frankly, I was looking very much forward to the hanging scene, but to the night I saw it, the whole audience was very disappointed that you didn't get hung. This is Max. <laughs> So I said to him, if he's going to carry on like that, then we might as well call it a day. Yeah, but so what did he say? So then I said to him, if that was his attitude, then he might as well go home. No, so what did he say? So then I said to him, if he'd meet me at half past seven, I might Excuse be able to... Excuse me, so Gabby, please feel free to carry on with your work. Oh. She means well, but she does go on a bit. Right, thank you. You'll tell me what he said later. Yeah, all right, Gabby. Millie really, Bates, your attitude is astonishing. Thanks. You and Gabby are here primarily to work, and please remember that. Right. When your guest finally arrives, try to apply the PCR rule. Politeness, courtesy and respect, AAT at all times. Is that clear? Yes, thank you. And uh, this is the lovely Millie. Danny, Millie, Millie, Danny. Right, it. Oh, look, it's finally arrived. Brilliant! <clears throat> but I'm going to go check it out, OK? OK, look, well, uh, uh, PCR. Oh, oh, well, I'll take him out to his dressing room. I'll be with you in a minute. Come oh, on, you. Up there. Uh, let's see if it's all here. Ah, now I'm going to finally find out where I'm coming from. So, once the program's running, you, you just uplink by modem uh, to the National Heritage Database, 
and it, it prints out your whole family tree. Right, so you're going to be able to find out who your great, 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 great granddad was. Yeah, and it's so easy. You don't have to be a genius to use it. Yeah. Paul, how far back does it go? Well, as far back as you like. I want to go back to the 12th century because um, I think I may be related to Robin Hood's gang. Because there, there was a merry man called Much the Miller's son. Paul, Robin Hood is English. You are American. Yeah, but America didn't exist in the 12th century. Didn't it? Oh, Millie, Paul, uh, this is um, uh, um, G uh, Gordon Bennett. Right. Uh, Bennett Bergonzi, actually. Bennett oh, Bergonzi. Sorry, um, uh, yes, B Bennett Bermondsey. Uh, uh, if you'd like to go through to the lounge, Juliet will show you the dressing rooms. There's loads more of these in the car. Would you go and get them, please? No, Max, I've got to just wait. Millie! Uh, car. Paul, car. Uh, hang on a second, Max. I'm just doing my family tree. What, during working hours? And I shouldn't bother anyway. I suspect you'll find that your family were on the first convict fleet to Virginia. Juliet, Juliet, yes. look, I've got an old record player. I'll have it for you, Max. Mm -hmm. I'm rather busy at the moment. No, but uh, you can get the old records from the props room. I can't, Max. I'm working. Juliet, Foxtrot. See you in the props room in five minutes. Check. Hi. Hey, hi, that's all right. So, uh, Thanks very so, much. You know, you use the telephoto lens, right, to kind of oh, get yes, the animals it's very handy. Oh, yes, absolutely. Right, that's brilliant. That's brilliant. But what about... Uh, oh, oh yes. Tony Shepard, award-winning wildlife photographer. Please Hello. Meet you. Oh, you got your sandwiches there. No, no, that's be careful good. that. There's lenses in there. Okay. Lenses. Lenses. Yeah. We have got a lot of equipment. Yeah, I think well, you've it's... made that common mistake of throwing money at the problem. Oh, I see. I've got a little box brownie, and with a bit of imagination, a bit of talent, you can work wonders. Oh, right. That's Max. Oh, I see. Where are they? Juliet, have you found them yet? Oh, give me a chance, Max. I've only just started looking. Listen, I'm making a cup of tea. Do you want one? Uh, yeah, yes, please. Chamomile. Oh! Right, oh, that does it. That does it. I've had enough of you. I've had enough of you. Quickly. Huh? He's Go a now. jinx. Stay away, Neil. He's more trouble than he's worth. The man. Did you not see access stuff? Yeah. Fish. Had to get changed and everything. Cocktails. Yeah. Just stay so away, I Neil. Actually didn't. You've been stitching him. Yeah. Stitching him up again. No, no, no. It was just. I don't believe I'm all that. Nah, nah. See what I mean? See what I mean? <laughs> Steve, Steve, you're a jinx. You are. Keep him away, <laughs> no, mate. Oh, Steve, Steve, what? Oh, Steve, Steve, what? Come here, don't come near me. I'm a jinx. No, you'll get hurt. Things will fall on you. You're Steve, terrible things. Calm down. <laughs> don't be ridiculous. Well, Trust me, okay? Come just on. introduce the next thing, please. It's back. It's brilliant. It's wonderful. It's got me on it. It's mousetrap. There we are, Steve. I told you you could trust me. Oh, thanks, Gabby. I'm not a jinx. <laughs> I'm normal. Oh, thank you, thank you, Gabby. Oh, I'm not a jinx. <laughs> series to my much popular demand to the first of the new Mousetrap! Yes, right, let's meet who's playing today. Your name is? Ruben Fish. I'm in age 11. My hobbies are football and swimming. Football and swimming? Oh, that's good. You're a good swimmer, are you? Yes. Got plenty of awards? Yeah. That's always useful. What about you? I'm an age Sean Savage. I'm age 10 and I like swimming and dancing. Ah, but can you mime? A uh, little bit. Well, we'll find out when you get to the mime square. Right, you know what you've got to do, don't you? Yes. All right, then, let's meet our little helpers in the middle today, shall we? They are Gemma Jolliffe and Daniel Smith. Whoa! Yeah. Have a round of applause. <laughs> now, we better have a look see what you're playing for, because today's four-star prize is a fabulous mountain bike! Do <laughs> so think you'll ride home on that? Well, we'll soon find out in about six minutes. Are we ready? Yeah! All right, then, let's have the count, shall we? Three, Three two, two, one, go! 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 This is a memory square. Well, under here, I've got ten objects. You've got ten seconds to remember them in. Are you ready? And then a little tiger there, or panther. We've got a domino, dice, battery, shell, apple, lock, sweet there, paintbrush, and a pen. Remember those things? Remember them? All right, that's it. Hey, test fight, test fight. <laughs> Only one of you runs down. Doesn't matter who's already gone. Go through the middle end. Turn off the left. Ready? You have to go for it. Turn off the down. Go, go, go. Right, move, 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 move. Yes, and back again. Yeah, you've got to move fast in this, 
right, you've got to help each other up the first balloon. Go on, who are you going to help her up there? Go on, up you go, up you go. Grab the, grab the thing, grab the thing. I'll give it, I'll, go on, burst the balloon. Go on, up you go. Up you go. Go on, pin it, go on. Stick it in the pin, stop, pin it on the end. Yes, good job. Onto here, onto here. Right, let's have a look, see what we've got to do, shall we? Right, the end of your faces are modelled up. Match the right pairs. I'll give you a cue. Look at the uh, wall paint, all right? Get matching them. See what we can do here. Talk to each other. It always helps. That's what we've done there. Talk to each other. You can do that. a lot quicker. That isn't. We've we'll, we'll got two wrong here. Got two wrong. Have a look at the two. That's right. Let's move on to the timeout square. Stop there. Right. Let me give you a bit of advice here. You work together, talk to each other. You'll get through this game a lot quicker. But you're doing extremely well. Let's have a look. See what you've won. This brilliant personal stereo. <laughs> Right, you've got five minutes left. Well, just over five minutes, I think. So uh, take your time. You're doing it extremely well, but work together, and it will help save you more time. Are you ready? Go! On you go. Come on. Oh, it's on the way. Through you come. All right. Out you come. Right, I'll just stay here. This way, this way. Come here, come here. Don't fight against me, otherwise you'll never get anywhere. Right. You've got to remember four things off the memory square. Dice, domino, apple, yeah. and lock. And lock is right. Let's move on. Right, I want three balls through in a game of netball here. One. Take your time. Two. One more. Three. Let's move on. Have a look here. Have a look at what we've got to do here. Right. Pass the ringer from here to here. All right. Swap over it in the middle on the yellow bit. If the buzzer sounds, you have to start again. So take your time on this one. Take your time. A bit closer. All right, take your time. You can do it. You can't reach the top, tell me. You're almost there. You're almost there. Yes, we got there. Let me take hold of it. All right, you got hold of it. Take your time here, coming back. Otherwise, I'll send you back to the middle. Sounds like somebody's left the door open back there. All right, here we go. Done. You did extremely well. I didn't think you could reach the top, but you did. Let's have a look. See, you've won this brilliant camera outfit. Yeah. You've got three and a half minutes left to do the game in. All right, you're doing very well at the moment. You're well within the time limit. Shall we get going? Go! Through you go. Yeah. Take your time on this one, be careful. Well, there you go. Careful you get out. Right, onto here, find your marks. Onto there. OK, this is the mime square. I'm going to ask you to do some miming. You've got to mime some winter sports, all right? And you, Shan, you've got to remember what they are, all right? Try and work out what they are. No noise, mime. How about that one? Skiing. Skiing is correct. What kind of skiing? Any idea? What do you think when people do that? What's that? Um, still slum. Slalom skiing, that's right. What about this one? What do you think he's doing there? What do you think that is? Oh, Come on, try again. Do it again. Do it again so she can... And they ski down and they leap. Ski and jump. Ski jumping is correct. Look at this one. Touch fire, touch fire. Right, what are you going to do? Right? Just go over here, you. Go over here. Switch off the valve. Can you do that? Are you ready to move? Just over here. Where, where are you showing you? Are you ready to touch? Go, go, go. Come on, come on, come on. Yes, I'm back again. I'm back again. Touch out. Come on. It's your time you're wasting. It's your time. You must never walk, otherwise your six minutes, six minutes are going to run out. What's that one? What's that one? What do you think that one is? Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Ice skating. Ice skating is correct. How about that one? That's a difficult one. Go on. Go on. What are they doing? And it, and it, and it's fine. Okay. Go to Bargaining or Bob Slayer. I'll accept that. So, look, I think we've got one more. Oh, no, this is not an easy one. How about that one? It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's like the one you had earlier when you, when you, when you, when you were skiing, right? But it's a different kind of skiing. But people go for miles and miles. They go all the way through the wheels, oh. fields and everywhere and, 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 and across 
across the, as they go across okay. the, cross country, three more, let's play a game of golf. Right. <laughs> three golf balls through the hole. Stay on there, Ruben, stay on there now. Right, here we go. We've got, oh, we didn't, didn't come out the other end. Go on, knock it through. You can do it. Come on. <laughs> If you find any trouble. Come on, let's try three more, shall we? We've got two, one more. All we need is one more. We've got three, don't you? Right, this is the true or false, Claire. I'm going to ask you a question, and you must tell me if it's true or false. Can we talk to Eva on this one, and I only want one of you to give me the answer, OK? Meteorology, meteorology is the study of meteors. True or false? Two false. Constant. It is false. It's the study of weather. Get onto here and stop the clock. Did you know that one or did you just guess? No, I knew it. Well done. That's brilliant. You know what that means? You've won this brilliant puzzle and Jenga game. Yeah. Right, right. Now, we're going to go down here now. Now, you've got to concentrate on this because you've got just about a minute left, all right? So you're going to have to move some. So listen to me. I'm going to try and help you get down there. Are you ready? Go. Let's have a look see what we've got to do here. Right, These, this is a taste test, right? Close your eyes, both of you. Open your mouth. Tell me, what are you tasting? Lemon drink. Lemon is correct. Here's the second one. Keep your eyes closed. Sugar. What? Sugar. Sugar. Yeah. Keep your eyes closed. What do you think this one is? Chocolate. Chocolate is correct. One last one. Open your mouth. What do you think it is? So I don't know them. So it's great. Come on, let's move on. Over you go. Come on. Over you go. Come on. Come on. Come on. Over here. Hold shot across, Ruben. Okay, look. Now, you've got to tell me. This is a memory square. Tell me something off the memory tray. Um, fluffy dice. You've done it. Um, come on. Um, yes, come on, move on. <laughs> right, one, one over each. One over each. You've got ten seconds. Come on. One more. One each over the pole. You can do it. You can do it. One more. Come on. One each. One each. 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 Come on. One each. I don't think I've ever been so nervous in all my life. Well done to you. Do you know what that means? You've picked up everything on the way round, including these brilliant Sega Master Systems. <laughs> now, get it together now. Think about it. You've got four questions to answer because it's now time to enter the trap. Come with me. Come with me. I think you're the luckiest people in the world at the moment. You're still playing for the four-star prize. It's a mountain bike. That is yours, one each, four of you. But what you've got to do is answer four questions to me, all right? Concentrate on this, because you've got the time it takes for the trap to fire, the ball to travel round, and the cage to fall. OK? Get thinking. Fire the trap. What is a penny farthing? Bike. It is a bike, that's one. Who wrote The Ugly Duckling? Hans Christian Andersen. Two. When Prince Charles becomes king, what number Charles will he be? Think. Charles, Charles the fourth. No, it's Charles the third. Which capital city is built on the River Seine? River Seine? China? No, it's Paris. From which fruit is cider made? Apples. Apples. You've got one more. What sort of animal is a bar bar? An elephant. It's an elephant. Yeah. Shot the Do you want to concentrate on the questions where you were just watching that track for all you left it up to Paul Sheehan, but you did get it right. Do you know what that means? You won the mountain bike! <laughs> well done. Have you had a good time? Yes. Well, we hope you've had a good time too. I'm worn out, but we'll see you again next week with another fantastic game of... Bye-bye. <laughs> Come on, have a look. <laughs> Today.
old, same old, same old way. God, I love you. Uncle Travis, Grandpa Buck, or Great Aunt Maybelline Sue. Don't fret yourself, Paul. I'll get the door. Hello, Mr. Cicero. Welcome to Motorbath. Juliet Nichols at your service. You Temporarily. <laughs> Millie! Yeah? Your guest, I believe. Hi, Hi there. Ladies. All right. Yeah. Good. Glad you could make it. Hey, Millie, come and have a look at this. Yeah? Well, I got back to the 16th century, and apparently I'm related to the Huguenots. I'm not surprised you have got a huge nose. <laughs> Sorry, but uh, can I go to my dressing room? Yeah, yeah, all right, dear. Come on, then. Oh, now, that is interesting. What is? Paul, um, oh, we've got him in call on you. This is the line he's not in six. Rooms in there, yeah. it's the rest of the curtain, the toilets are there, your dressing room's there, I think it's number three. All right, charcoal, ta-ra, cock. Goodbye, Mr. Cicero. Please don't hesitate to call if there's anything else you need. You're wasting P your breath, Juliet. She never listens. PCR, Millie, politeness, courtesy, and respect, AAT at all times. Please try to remember that. Yes, okay. Danny! Hi, how are you? Can I get you anything? Um, Better? Yeah, Good. Thanks. Right, do you want a bag of crisps in a lounge or to go and look at Paul's computer? Um, Come on, we'll go and look at Paul's computer. <laughs> I'll be dipped in axle grease. Well, careful what we find out. It's incredible. Well, look, I've gone back to the 12th century, and uh, apparently I'm related to this Norman nobleman, Norman? Lord Millibree of Snee, and he had a st an estate near Nottingham. I mean, he could have been held up by Robin Hood's gang. Great. What about this, Chris? Shut up, will you? Are you trying to tell me that you're related to royalty? Oh, theoretically, yeah. Oh, yeah. Technically, I'm 273rd in line for the throne. <laughs> <clears throat> the problem with keeping fish is they tend to end up dead. And dead fish don't make very good pets. Well, I've got a brilliant idea to help cheer you up if you've had a recent bereavement. First thing is, you take your dead fish, you kiss it goodbye, then you give it to the cat. Oh, loved it. Mind you, if you haven't got a cat, you can lob it over your neighbour's garden. That leaves an empty tank, which makes a perfect and ideal home for the most lovable and entertaining of pets. Worms. Worms are great. They're absolutely easy to keep, and the best thing of all is that they are free. But before I tell you how to catch those little wrigglers, I want to give you the A to Z of making a wormery. Step one, find some soil. Oh, this will do nicely. Ugh. Oh, fill the tank, like so. Oh, not forgetting to uh, wipe your hands afterwards. Step two, get some dirty dishes like these, and <clears throat> smash him up. This, this is big and clever, because that means your parents never ask you to do the washing up again. Then you can lay these on top of the soil, and these make excellent drainage. But if you've got any broken uh, flower pots, you can use those instead. Then, your tank is ready to receive its payload of worms. But now for the exciting part, where do you catch those little worms? Well, you take the empty, well, you take the washing up water into the garden and pour it over the lawn. <clears throat> Within minutes, the little worms come wriggling to the surface. You scoop a handful up and you put those in your wormery. There you got it. Perfect. Ah, but what do they eat, I hear you ask yourself? Well, it's not dog food. It's not cat food, it's leaves. So, um, Timber! Uh, uh, grab yourself a handful of leaves and feed those to your worms. Perfect, the absolute brilliant wormery. <laughs> now, you can help improve your wildlife photography with a wormery. I took some shots earlier in the day, there you got it. The new fifth presenter of Motormouth, Wormy. How about a worm on a skiing holiday? A worm on normal Blackpool Beach holiday? Or a worm scoring an FA Cup goal? Absolutely brilliant. Now, where's the best place to keep your wormery? On top, come with me, <coughs> of the telly. Then you can watch me and your wormery at the same time. Now, I'm putting together a little fact sheet about keeping worms. And if you want to send a stamped address envelope to me here, I'll put one in the post to you. The address to send it to is Wormery, Motormouth, P.O. Box 1, Mason Kent, ME14, 5LL. That's Wormery, Fact Sheet, Motormouth, P.O. Box 1, Mason Kent, ME14, 5LL. Now, um, <clears throat> one of the best things about uh, 
keeping a wormery is that you can um, double your stock with a single stroke. Now, come here, come on. You know you love being chopped, Steve, chopped. Come on. Steve, well, no. that's quite enough. No, come no, on, look, that's quite no, enough. Look, it's a lot better than down, keeping fish. And, and the best thing about down, worms Steve. is if they don't smell because come they've got us. no noses. Coming up now, a brilliant Genesis video. Come with us, Steve. Mad, come come with us. Current video from Genesis. Right, uh, now to get some sensibility back to the programme. It's typical about mouth, isn't it? The time that WH Smith announced that they're not going to stock records anymore, we do an item on record players. However, these are really old. Now you've got the choice of CD and stuff like that. But about 80 years ago, you didn't have the choice, did you? This is Bennett Bagonzi, who's from uh, the National Sound Archive. How old is this old thing here? Well, this dates from about 1906. And, um... It's a pathé, it's French. OK, uh, how did they work? Because obviously we're into high-tech hi-fi now, but it wasn't like that 80 years ago. No, it wasn't. Um, the sound travels from the stylus here up the bar. Yeah. This diaphragm is like a drum, and then it comes along this tube, and this horn here acts as the amplifier, and that's how you hear it. So there's no volume control or anything like that, it's just simply on or off? Well, you can put a sock in it if you like. <laughs> that's about as technical as it got 80 years that's ago. That's right. I think off is probably the best bet for this one just at the minute. OK. Now, you might think that because they were so big and stuff like that, that you couldn't take them out on your picnics, on your holidays and stuff like that. But just like we can take our ghetto blasters out these days, the same applied 20 or 30 or even 50 years ago. Yes. That would look like a box, but if you open it up, just look. How does this yes. one work? Well, this dates from the 1920s, actually. This is the horn. Well, that piece of cardboard? This piece of cardboard acts as a horn. And you screw that to the arm? I screw this in place. The principle, then, is the same. It's just that the bits are collapsible. That's right. Stick and the, uh, I was going to say put the vinyl on, but it's not, is it? It's shellac. It's shellac. <laughs> Marvellous. Ten-inch records, 78 RPM with those? That's right. I can see how with a ten-inch record and a box this size that you would be able to uh, be, have a portable record player, but you can't tell me that a box this size Oh, yes. It's going to play a 10-inch record. Yes, it is, because... Oh, this is great. Look at this. The whole thing This unfolds. is called the Peter Pan. This was British. It was made in the 1920s again. And if you want to see these, these are on display at the National Sound Archive all the time, aren't they? That's right. We're in Exhibition Road in Kensington. We're just up the road from the Science Museum. And will it cost us money to get no, in? No, it's free. Oh, brilliant. Now, I noticed that with the first one we looked at, the pathé, the, the needle went from the inside out, so all the yes. others have gone from the outside yes, in. Yes, that's right. Well, pathé being French, they had to be a little bit different to everybody else. Well, they do, don't they, the French, generally? Find you, 1992 now, European boundaries are down. This is quite an expensive thing. Was this a, a, a sort of a rich man's plaything, these things? Um, well, something like the pathé might be, but these, these were never very expensive. But there was a cheaper version, was there not? The cheaper version of this, that's right, had this horn, which fold it away, and the whole thing pulls up in this box. Hey, absolutely brilliant. Hey, yeah, Come yeah, on. no, you can't. What are you doing here? Look, um, I'm not going to continue with this item while Steve's here because he'll probably break it. Look, we'll take the break now. We'll take the break now. That should give you enough time to clear off, mate. How about to Maidstone? Go to Maidstone. Go away. You'll break something. Steve Johnson safely dispatched away from these delightful and but rather expensive pieces of uh, sound equipment. Back with Bennett from this National Sound Archive. We've had the oldest. These two are probably the greatest extremes. This is certainly the loudest. How old is this? Yes, this uh, dates from about 1919. Uh, it's a Decca, again, British made. So, but the horn's different on this yes, one. Yes, the horn's different. It, the sound travels up this pipe and I think I'll take it off I think it's now. stuck. Um, it is old. Yes. And then this is the reflector in the lid, which reflects the sound out into the room. Same principle as a car headlamp, almost. Yes, almost. Tiny little disc, almost like a CD player, that six-inch yes, disc. Yes, but you could put a ten-inch if you wanted on. And speaking of compact discs, I think the one next to it is probably... Or are you going to pack it away first? It's probably the ultimate compact disc player, or certainly the original compact disc player. Ten-inch record is almost completely obscuring the record player, but I kid you not, there is one underneath there. And just to right. prove it... Yep. <laughs> It's uh, antiquated workings permitting. We should be able to play it for you. Hang on a second. Have a listen to this. This is incredible. <laughs> Fabulous piece of music called Have a Banana. Right, now we've proved to you it'll play. Watch this. Just look how, how tiny this will become. This is probably the 
pocket-sized record player. Take your 10-inch disc off. The disc itself is bigger than the record player. How old will this one be, Bennett? This one dates from the late 20s, early 30s. How much were they to buy things like this in those oh, days? Oh, I think they were, they were a few pounds, probably considerably less than 10 pounds. This is great. Look at but, that. But uh, even during the Depression, they had to be cheap. People that, were the speaker poor. goes on the top there. Yes, that's right. I won't actually no, hold don't, it. They're quite fragile, isn't it? In place, but I can hold it up. Hold close it, it up. up. It's so tiny. It'll even go in your pocket, so you could take it away with you on a cycling trip or a nice picnic and play your records out in the countryside. If we would like to see these, remind us again where the Sound Archive is. Yes, at 29 Exhibition Road, just up the road from the Science Museum. And it's Kensington. completely free, so go along and enjoy it. Bennett, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Paul, 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 what are you doing? Uh, I'm just sorting out some stuff for Tony Shepherd. Let me do that, your worshipness here. Bow, bow. Can we do anything for you, sire? Yes. You can cut that out. You're making me nervous. Oh, pull, pull, pull. Oh, no, 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 no. No, no, no. Don't ruin those raw waving hands. Make him a cup of tea, you. Sorry about this, Dave. Oh, Gray Molly. Yeah, I'm fine. Come on, Paul. Enjoy it a bit more. Blimey, if Max had just found out he was heir to the throne, he'd be doing triple somersaults by now. You have us making him cups of tea every ten seconds. Oh. Hey, imagine if you knew about me and my, you know. Oh, I tell you, he'd be in here now. He'd be groveling on his hands and knees to you. And as for Juliet, well, she'd be licking your boots. Say that again. Where is everybody? This place is more like a deserted playground than a hive of industry. Ah, oh, Julia. Stephen. Have you seen Paul around? I'm afraid I haven't seen anybody. I'm the only one doing any work around here. All oh, right. Will you take some of these worms through to the uh, props room then? Certainly, Stephen. Thank you. Paul, these disgusting creatures are your responsibility, I believe. Juliet, you yes? cannot leave worms on the royal lap. What? You don't know what I'm talking about, do you? Haven't a clue. This is Paul. Paul Miller. He of noble descent. Descendant of Lord Milbury of Snee. English translation, please. Sorry. You see, Paul's computer mm -hmm. has churned out a printout telling us all about his ancient ancestors. And it says Sorry. that Paul is in line to the British throne. <laughs> Very entertaining, Millie. You two never cease to amaze me the lengths you'll go to to avoid working, including trapping a guest. That's a printout from the National Heritage Database. You'll see my relevant ancestors are highlighted. I think you better leave the worms with my retainer. <clears throat> Thank you. You can go. Juliet, I don't think it's very polite to show you behind to a royal person. I, I know it seems silly, Juliet, but it's just protocol. Do you think she bought it? Well, she didn't try and slug me. Hmm. Give me just a little more time and my hair will surely grow. I can't believe Give... it. I just can't believe it. What can't you believe? Max, have you ever noticed Paul talking to plants? That looks nice. Thanks. Uh, no. Or showing an interest in architecture? No. I think that should be a bit more over to the right. Oh, thanks. Or, um, or, or sort of, actually, he's got rather protruding ears, hasn't he? Who's got protruding ears? Paul. I mean, he could be related to Prince Charles. Juliet. Many, 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 many people have protruding ears and they're not all related to Prince Charles. No, but he's got proof. What do you mean proof? What proof? He's got a printout of his heritage from St. Catherine's House saying he is 273rd in line to the British throne. What nonsense! It's true! <gasps> Juliet, Paul is stupid, he's foreign, mm. he's common and he's foreign. Mm. And I refuse to believe for one instance that he is in any way related to our glorious British royal family. So you don't think it's possible then? The very notion is offensive. Thanks. <gasps> okay, so you've got Juliet, but how are you going to get Max? I don't know, because he's a right stick in the mud. We're going to have problems with him. He never does a jot of work. Sorry I'm late. I must have been stuck in the mud. Right. Right, you stupid girl. Where's Paul? Would you like to make an appointment? No, I would not like to make an appointment. Go and get him immediately. Oh. Paul? Your Majesty. Max would like an audience. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, Max, great. I wanted yes. to have a chat with you. Oh, you've heard, obviously. Yes, and it's preposterous. I couldn't believe it either. Lineage. Leave us. Yeah, well, it's just a distant relation, of course, but it's all there in black and white. Oh, listen, I hope you don't think this is going to change our relation. <laughs> I certainly do not. No, it's still Max and Paul. You know, I wanted to have a chat with you about your admiration for the British royal family. Well, uh, I think they do a marvelous job. And loyalty like that shouldn't go unrewarded. Really? Well, 
If you're related to them, you can just jolly well get me an invitation to tea at Buckingham Palace, can't you? Yeah, I suppose I could. I mean, they're family after all. Really? Millie, I think that's a great idea, Max. Well, oh, you do your best for me then. Sure, I can't stand around here being an ordinary person. Oh. Busy. <sighs> practice, practice, practice. Now, come back here, come back here. Now, look, he's got a, a suit, right? It's stripy, and, and, and you have to call him three times for it. Oh, come on, <laughs> What are you doing? Um, I'm telling me worms about Beetlejuice. That is disgusting. You're talking to your worms? Yeah. You are disgusting. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm not disgusting, am I? What? Did you say you don't like Beetlejuice? Come here. Now, what do you think of Beetlejuice? Oh, oh, Steve, I love it. I love it. You're not going to eat me, are you? Um, I don't know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, Juliet, what are you doing? HRH ordered me to take them for a walk. Oh, are you better then? You know something, Max? I hear you're in line for a CBE. Do you really think so? Hmm. Creep of the British Empire. Oh, yes, what Max, do you want? Um, I was told, well, I was told you'd give me some film. From Were you film. indeed? Well, yeah. you better come with me then. Okay, right. And just the final tweak there. And uh, <clears throat> yes, there it is, uh, my lord. Mm. Finished. Yes, well, I think you've got me nicely. Mm, Millie and Danny are very good. We're dogs. I don't know, it's just a little too formal or something. Oh, well, I'm very sorry. Maybe uh, just another bristle down there, eh? Maybe that should do Perfect. it. Perfect. Have it framed. Uh, now, court philosopher, I want some ideas to make this court a happening kind of place. You might turn the car park into a skateboard park. Yes, like it. Rap music in the dressing rooms, permanently piped through. Good, good. You've got the ideas. Uh, Excuse me. Yes, oh, faithful Millie? Everybody else in this room has got a job except me. Mm, I see your point. Court philosopher, court artist. Hang on a sec. Jester? Yes. <clears throat> Definitely. Court jester. Thanks, Danny. All right, well, you've run out, have you? Yes, I, I need yes, some more right film, please. This should you do, stand a VH cassette. Well, no, that's no good, actually. It's, uh, this is film, not video. Oh, and well, I'm camera. sorry about that. If you want to film me, better go to the chemist. Now, listen, I've been meaning to ask you something. Yes. Where do you find all those little rat holes with the double glazing in them? Well, actually, we don't actually go out hunting for them. We make a set, have glass, mm -hmm. and we lift the glass oh, yeah. up when we want to film mm -hmm. it and film mm -hmm. it on the thing. Do you know something? You're beginning to get on my nerves. Will you stop fiddling with the scepter? <clears throat> OK, Jester, Jester. Hearken unto me, for verily I say, this be a right cracker. Did you hear us, the one earth, about the lame pig who spoke thus to his master? Murray Squire, boil your head in the old hag's broth! <laughs> Millie, that may have raised a smile in the 12th century, but this is 1992. You're gonna have to do better than that, or I'll have you thrown in the tower. No, be Or, I'll send you on a rambling weekend with Max. Oh, well, excuse me, verily, verily, excuse me, please, sir, but if you wouldn't mind, would you hit it? This is Paul and he's my ruler. ruler. In the world there's no one cooler. cooler. I want him to be our king. king. Then the church bells ring a ding ding. Ring a ding ding. Ring a ding ding. ding, ding. ding, ding, ding. Yeah. 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 It's strictly That's necessary. It. Oh, it's old yeah. Goaty Maxer. Boink. Oh, Ow. Come again. Hit him again. Boink. <laughs> ah, sorry. Excuse me. That is the jester. She has a royal license. I've got a TV license. So what? Sure. All right. I've had enough of you. Guards, seize him. Ho, oh, ha, ha, ha. Mm. Guards, guards. I want a word with you about my date with Mrs. Paul. 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 Get in here. Tell me again, why am I such a clever king? Because you have Max groveling. And you've got Juliet snivelling around with the worms. Ah, grape me. OK, go first. Paul, Miss. that is it. I categorically refuse to look after those disgusting creatures for one second longer. Uh, a subject with a petition. Approach. Look, Paul, let's get one thing straight. Are you listening to me? Hmm? Oh, well, we would love to, Juliet, but you don't appear to be kneeling. What? Right, Paul. Uh, just me. Your Royal Lovely Highness. Your Royal Lovely Highness. I know I'm just a person. I know I'm... Just a peasant. But please, would you take me off worm but duty? Please, would you take me off worm duty? Please, please. Juliet, all you had to do was ask. Do you think I'm inhuman? From this moment forward, you're off worm duty forever. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank Excuse you. Excuse me, sire. May I make so bold? And there are a few jobs we haven't sorted out yet. Yes. Well, obviously, you'll have to do something. Well, anything, 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 just not the worms. Toilet cleaning. 
Ah, 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 that leg is the property of the British nation. <gasps> Sorry. If you're interested in animals, then like me, you probably love wildlife programmes. You get a great insight into the animal's life, and you get some great close-ups of the animal, like this bearded dragon. Brilliant, the bearded dragon or lizard from Australia. Now, if you thought that that was actually shot in the thorny scrub of Australia, then you'd be mistaken. That was actually shot here in the Motormouth studio by wildlife cameraman Tony Shepherd. Good morning, Tony. Good morning, good Welcome morning. to Motormouth. Thank you very much. Now, is that sort of thing, does that happen a lot in wildlife documentaries where you sort of create the set in the studio as opposed to going out? Normally, we use a set when we want to actually catch a particular behaviour and if necessary, we bring in an animal for that particular sequence. Like if we want to watch it, eggs hatching or something very small like invertebrates or anything like that, we bring it into a set so we can control it. Uh, very difficult to do it out in the wild otherwise. Is there any drawbacks with, with something like this? Um, well, there is straight away. I mean, if the thing runs right off the set, you've actually had to start all over again. So there are the problems with it. But also, being controlled, we can actually redo it again and wait for the eggs to hatch if we're waiting for a long time. So obviously it has its advantages. Oh, it definitely has its advantages. Now this is a, an ordinary television camera here. Yeah. This is the camera that you use out in the field. What's the main difference? Well, this is, um, this is a film camera. So where, as if you look, use a video camera, you can then see your results. You can play it back straight away and see if it's all worked out. But this, when I've shot the film, I've seen what I've shot. But when it has to then go to be developed, like someone taking a holiday snap, they have to send their film off. I have to send this off, and it could be two or three days, or it could be two or three weeks, before I actually see the end results. So you won't know what you've done until some time later. So if there's been a problem, we don't find it out until... OK, well, let's go and have a look over here on the steam back. Now, this is the machine that you play your films back on and edit, edit them and everything. Yeah, this, this is a machine like... You'd, if you had a video recorder, you put a video in here, but for film, we have to actually... Um, have a steam becker and this and is how we, we look at our shots that we've taken now this is of a red-throated diver in the west coast of Scotland right. and um, it's coming up to sit on its nest well because the bird itself is so shy yeah. we actually had a camera here and I was actually on the other side of the lock about 400 meters away and looking through it all on binoculars and um, pressing the button by radio control to set the camera off. So it was actually a remote control so it was a camera remote control standing camera. here. So it's standing there, that's it, yes. And, and so if something went wrong, how long would it take you to walk well, it, around that lock? It, well, we'd set it up in the morning and not go back to the site until the evening. And of course, the trouble was on that sort of situation, you don't know whether anything does go wrong until you've actually come back and see the film. Does it ever go wrong? It does. This, this is the classic experience. Here we've actually got the, ne the uh, camera right next to this, camouflaged covered in moss. The yeah. camera is about six inches away from the nest as the bird comes up. But unfortunately, as you can see, oh. um, the bird actually spits water up onto the <laughs> set, onto the lens. And um, we're uh, completely... That is a nightmare. The, the shot that is, is no good. That is actually a superb That's shot. It. Not many people have actually seen that, have they? Red-throated no. diver on a nest. Yep. Coming right up close to it and everything else. I mean, everything else was perfect, except for it splashed water onto the uh, lens and um, that unfortunately ruined the shot. So uh, Can we just say at this point, not anyone can take a picture of a red-throated no, diver? No, no, you have to have a license. This okay. is one of quite a many birds that you need special licenses to go to their nest site. Right. And they are very difficult to obtain um, and you have strict control on how many licenses we go. So what's going on here? Well, this is another one where we wanted the same bird and we shot, put a t uh, camera in a tank yeah. and um, we wanted the bird to actually swim across in front of the camera and go onto the nest site. Once again, radio controlled. Now, what did you think of sort of that? What was okay, well, just, just stop it there. Let me have a look. So, so you've got the fish tank here. That's the it. camera is submerged in the fish tank. That's it. I think that is a brilliant shot. To actually get something like that, a red-throated diver swimming past the camera is genius. Well, un unfortunately, it went a bit wrong. Why? Because once the tank was in, it settled into the mud. And as you can note, very slightly, the thing goes downhill. <laughs> oh, okay. So the bird it, itself yeah. is going downhill. So again, you can't, so you once can't again, use and that the trouble shot. Is we don't see it until we actually get the stock back after reviewing it. So unfortunately, another we eventually got it, but uh, unfortunately that particular one was no good. That must so be really disheartening for you. It is actually when you're going through the rushes the first time, you do sort of sit there and cross 
fingers and hoping everything you, you planned yeah. actually comes out. But that doesn't always do work out that way. Okay, well, you, you go out in the cold weather there and you take all your equipment with you. Yes. Not like our cameramen here who have a nice warm studio and all their cameras <laughs> set up for them. You have to provide your own equipment, don't yes, you? Yes, yes. Is it expensive? It is it's actually extremely expensive, unfortunately. Um, uh, to provide all the, my equipment, yeah. um, I would say the cost most probably about £40,000 worth. And what do you get for that? What, what's well, I have here, here I mean, yeah. a lens which is 600mm zoom lens. Yeah. Absolutely ideal and gets you out of a lot of trouble, but once again, terribly expensive. Now, we've actually got some footage that you've taken with this lens of a sparrowhawk. Yeah. And it's sitting on its nest and it's got its chicks with it and it's actually feeding the chick. Now, tell me how you got that shot. First well, actually, of all. We, we, I was walking past the. Um, um, through the wood from filming the red throated diver and suddenly saw the, the female go to the nest. So I quickly set up my camera and started to film it. Um, but the problem was there that I was actually quite a distance away from it. So I had to use the bigger lens as possible. And uh, we got some nice stuff, but unfortunately I couldn't get any real close-ups of the nest because, as you'll see in a minute, I was actually so far away from the nest site itself. It, um, so roughly, I would say, possibly about the length of a football pitch away from the actual nest. You're actually but, miles away but there, But this is you? where you need um, a lens in this sort of calibre to, to get shots like that. And again, we can just establish that you're not actually disturbing the nest. No, no, no. Um, in fact, that's another bird that you actually need a licence to actually film. OK, so now maybe you can give us a couple of tips, because I know a lot of people are into wildlife and like to take pictures. What about if someone wants to become a wildlife cameraman like you, apart from having to remortgage their house to get yes, the equipment? Yes, yes. <laughs> I, I mean, I suggest that actually the best bet is to actually join um, the RSPB or something like that and go out to uh, the reserves yeah. and starting with just an ordinary still camera, taking up photographs of the birds because you can actually get surprisingly close to these birds yeah. and then eventually developing further on after that and possibly then nowadays there's the video recorder so you could actually start using which makes things much easier right. uh, you could use a video recorder instead all right well we are going to have a competition now we've got a cracking prize up for grabs here do you want to just tell us all about it Tony? yes i've said um, to motormouth that we'll have a competition and for one day we'll go and make yeah. a wildlife documentary film and you'll help us and I'll help them right. uh, the person the winner will come with me yeah and she will be able to use all my equipment okay and I will of course help her to set it all up uh, oh he, and of she, course. Or he <laughs> yes and she and, and they will make the, the film we okay. will stand there and give as much advice as possible but they will actually make the film and you can and you can bet your life I'll be going as well you're not going to keep me away from this one now what you've got to do it's very simple we would like you to make a study of an animal now by a study I mean we want you to draw a picture it could be your favorite animal could be a very common animal in your garden or take a photograph and what we want you to do is make some notes about the behavior of the animal so you've got to study it could be a common animal could be your favorite animal one in your garden whatever couple of pictures camera yeah. drawing Anything. and a profile on it and send it to this address it is wildlife film competition motormouth p.o box one maidstone kent me 14 5 l that's wildlife film competition Motormouth, P.O. Box 1, Maidstone, Kent, ME 14, 5, double L. Good luck with that. Cracking prize. Thank you very much, Tony. Thank you very much. Looking and forward now, to seeing Motormouth, the Beetlejuice. Juliet, what are you doing? Anything's better than worms, Max. You don't need to do the worms. You don't need to do the floor. You are the administrator. Max, I don't need to do the worms. I don't need to do the floor. I'm the administrator. I just said that. What's happening? Look, Juliet, I've been thinking. Paul cannot be royalty. Because I know, as an Englishman, I'd feel it in my bones. Oh, you were lapping it up five minutes ago. Well, the worm has turned. Oh. oh, I'm sorry about that. No, it's just that for the last, what, 17 minutes, 18 minutes, I have been trying to tap into that computer to check the facts, but I, I, I can't switch it on. Max, that's it. OK, this is the plan. You keep Paul and Millie occupied while I... Well, I could sign a petition having the studio move two inches to the left. Yeah, why don't we just kill Max? Oh, customers. Right. <laughs> Paul. Oh, oh. Your uh, Royal Highness. Your Royal Highness. I beg to be excused. Don't overdo it, dear. Right, then. Um, uh, your Royal Highness. Max, um, your you know the rules as well as I do. What? The commoner's head cannot be higher than the royal cranium. Oh, he's been watching the king and I again. What about her? She has special dispensation. Well, you should see a doctor. Right, now, your kingdom, it's all in order. I've been sorting everything but out. But how and... are my worms? Um, well, they're, they're in the box. And are they happy? It's hard to tell with a worm. Oh, come on. Hello, yes, I'm still here, yes. Paul Miller, that's right. Really? 
Right. So what do I do? Mm -hmm. Press enter and the correct information will come up. Lovely. You've been very helpful. Thanks very much, yes. Bye. Right. Really? Well, well, well. <laughs> Welcome to Motorbat. On this very auspicious occasion, the televising of the first ever Cardboard Cup final. Atmosphere down the pitch, quite electric at the moment. I have with me footballing expert Frank Sidebottom. Frank, uh, how are the players feeling just at this moment? Uh, they're up to Jupiter, Brian. Absolutely, very much so. Well, obviously, the cacophony of stars have gathered to see this match. And if you look through the grandstand, you can see a famous face every second person. My goodness me, who could that be with Gabby Roslin? No, it's surely not. Good morning. Yes, I'm very pleased to say we have Kylie Minogue in the studio. Kylie, what do you think the score's going to be in oh, the match? Could you give me just a little more time? Oh! Corny oh. gag, number one on Note to Mouth. Well, there'll be plenty of corny references as many uh, could. Welcome to Motorbath. On this very auspicious occasion, the televising of the first ever Cardboard Cup final. Atmosphere down the pitch, quite electric at the moment. I have with me footballing expert Frank Sidebottom. Frank, uh, how are the players feeling just at this moment? Uh, they're up to Jupiter, Brian. Absolutely, very much so. Well, obviously, the cacophony of stars have gathered to see this match. And if you look through the grandstand, you can see a famous face every second person. My goodness me, who could that be with Gabby Roslin? No, it's surely not. Good morning, yes. I'm very pleased to say we have Kylie Minogue in the studio. Kylie, what do you think the score's going to be in um, the match? Could you give me just a little more time? Oh! oh. Corny gag, number one on Note to Mouth. Well, there'll be plenty of corny references as many uh, contrived commentators to references as I could get in as well this morning. Like uh, the state of the pitch, they always talk about that, don't they? And our pitch is looking quite marvellous. That's doubtless due to the efforts of our wonderful grounds and Mr. Steve Johnson. Yeah. Hey, 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 well, it looks like we've had a bit of a worm invasion. But I've got a brilliant idea with something we could do with them later in the programme, and that isn't eating them. Back to you, Andy. Do you like worms? Do Very like much worms? so, yes. Well, I wouldn't be quite so sure about that. You wouldn't be able to see the programme without the fantastic camera work of our boys. And uh, head of cameras this morning is Neil Buchanan. Oh, yes, thank you, Brian. Yes, now, if you thought that camera work was very good down there on the pitch, you ain't seen nothing yet. We've got some wildlife camera work later on from Tony Shepherd, and we'll be going behind the scenes and see some of the tricks of the trade. But uh, now, I think things are hotting up down in the stadium, so back to you, Brian. Thanks very much indeed, Neil. Yes, we're yeah. just moments away now from kickoff. Oh, uh, the players are uh, electric. They have, you could cut the atmosphere with a knife down there in the stadium. Oh, some scissors. Very much so, but before the kickoff. Billy Warlock braves the waves in New Baywatch at 525.
Welcome to Motormouth, perhaps the most generous show on telly. Time to give a few things away, don't you think? Absolutely. Go ahead, mate. I'm All just right. playing remember, remember a couple of weeks ago, we had Emma and Stephen Ford in from the British School of Falconry, and Emma asked the question, where does the Harris Hawk come from? Well, we had a competition, and there was loads of correct answers. The first correct answer came out of the hat was from Nicola McNaught, and the answer is, of course, South America. Nicola is from Atherston. Well done, Nicola. You will be going for a weekend at the British School of Falconry to do this sort of stuff. You'll be what, whistling? And whistling, yeah. <laughs> and I won't be there whistling. But the Harris Hawk will be there. Loads of great falcons. Emma and Stephen will be there to give you an introductory course to falconry. Cracking prize. Correct. Remember this game? We were yes. playing this Brilliant. last week with Ram and Raj. This is the, car the carom board, and we were giving you this away. This has been handmade uh, and logoed with our Motormouth logo as well. We asked you the question, from where do you strike the striker? This is the striker, and this is how you play the game. The answer is very simple. From between the moons. That's what these circles are called. You have to strike like that from between the moons. And this carom board, beautiful piece of furniture, is going to John Finn from Old Meldrum, AB51. OBP. So well done to you. We'll get this carom board in the post to you. By the way, we're still looking for your uh, entries as to why people call a house a drum. We still haven't quite figured that one out haven't yet. Got a clue. Um, and don't forget, stick around because coming up very shortly, we've got uh, Danny Newman talking to Gabby all about Prince of Thieves. Got it. So it's worked out he's not the king, so I'm back to bog washing. Well, I'm sure you're better at that than telling jokes. Thanks a lot, Danny. I hope your item goes really well. Get in oh, there. Sorry. Excuse sorry. me. Oh, Max, um, yes. look after the bearded oh, dragon for oh, me. Oh, bearded dragon, okay? yeah. you know, that's what they used to call my Aunt Maud. Do they? <laughs> really? <laughs> Come with me, I'll tell you what. Ah, Julian, Tony's off. Oh, bye-bye, Tony. Right, cheerio. Save Jenny back. Yes, thank you very much. Nice to meet you. Um, don't forget to look after the dragon no, until it gets picked up. Oh, okay, okay, bye. You, then. Is, there any, uh, is there any tea? Yes. What, all grey? Yes. With skimmed? Yes. Good. Oh, hello, Barry. Hey, any chance of a cup of tea? Yes. Sorry, Mr. Sidebottom, sorry. Well, I don't want one, because I'm off to fix up a date with Mrs. Manol. Yes, don't hurry, Bab. <sighs> you only tea? Oh, for heaven's sake, Millie, just make your own. Oh, now listen, you two, I I'm really sorry about today, and I know you both think I've been awful, but if it makes you feel better, I've not enjoyed it for one single minute, and I'd much rather take orders from you two than Paul. Well, thanks very much, Millie. It makes me feel a little bit better, but let's just forget the whole thing ever happened. Yeah, we're all back to normal now, and I want to watch Danny on the box. Yeah. yeah. There we go. Three cheers for the Emperor of France. Hip hip. Is there any tea? Very pleased to say we've got Daniel Newman, who was the star of Prince of Thieves with Kevin Costner. Danny is live here in the Most West Studio. Now, that film is, in fact, one of the all-time best-selling right. films now. It was your first big feature film. Yeah. How did you get the part? Um, it was no really amazing story. Everyone else was, like, in a youth club, and someone came along and said, oh, wow, you're brilliant, but... Never happened to me. I just did an audition, and they just said you had it. You know? And that was the next day, and you had, you were very surprised about it, all right? Yeah, I was sort of lying in bed, never expected anything, and um, phone rang. Uh, you know, they called me along, so I sort of ran there, shirt half open, went, hello, and they sort of, you got the job. Well, congratulations on that. You really enjoyed Thanks. it as well, didn't you? Yeah, it was great. Fun. Now you played the part of Wolf. Can you tell us a yeah. bit about his character? Um. What was he like? Well, he's about 13, 12, so he's mischievous. And on the other hand, he's, um, he's the eldest out of the eight children, and his father's away, so he's also got to be responsible. So it's somewhere between that. Excuse me one second. This is going very strange. Can I, can I hand that to somebody? It's making some very strange noises. Would you mind looking after that? <laughs> Thank you very much. I wasn't quite sure where that was coming from. Now, obviously, that right. film, you were with, starring with Kevin Costner yeah. and Christian Slater. So when you were told you were going to be in the film with Kevin Costner, did you just go to be mad like I would have? <laughs> I probably would have if I knew who he was at the time, because um, I only found out about a month later. Then I went mad, but and first you, I didn't. So had you seen any of his films before? Um, not at that point, but I went out and watched them. Great stuff. OK, well, let's have a look at a bit of Danny playing the part of Wolf in Prince of Thieves with Kevin Costner. So we saw you playing with it, well, right. doing a bow and arrow. What do you call it when you, what's it called? When Archery. Archery, that's it. <laughs> it's still that crackling noise, I think. Now, did you have to train to do that? Um, yeah, not much, sort of in between scenes. But you've got a great story about that scene, haven't Yeah, you? Um, when I was actually doing that scene, um, the one in which I'm supposed to miss, uh, I actually hit bullseye by a complete fluke. <laughs> so. Did they get it on film as well? No, it was, it was off, off the camera. Have you kept archery up since the film? I intended to, but I've been a bit busy, so it's you been hard. You have haven't you? Well, we'll find out what you've been up to, because first of all, we've got... Uh, uh, no, who are we going to first? Stephen. There you are. Give us a wave, Stephen. Right, Stephen, Hi, you've Stephen. got a question for Danny. What part of this film scared you most? 
definitely the hanging. Um, although it's perfectly safe. If you're, gonna, if you're gonna have to act something, then you have to believe in it. And if you're standing up there with a rope around your neck, it's pretty scary. But um, when my nan went to see the film, there was a girl sitting next to her, and when, when that came on, she started crying because she thought that I'd actually been killed. And she was like, oh my God, they killed that boy in that film again. Yeah. And she went, no, they haven't, he's alive. And she went, well, how do you know that? Because he's my grandson. <laughs> <laughs> but it was all very safe, wasn't it? They had harnesses. Yeah, they, I had like a things. harness and a wire on the back. Oh, it still looks scary stuff, though. And Carrie, we've got a question from Carrie. There you are, Hi, just Carrie. wave. Okay, Carrie. If you could have a romantic scene with anybody, who would it be with? Um, Ooh. I think that's got to be Renona Ryder. I had a feeling you might say that. Yeah. Actually, you, you've just been working with Renona yeah, Ryder, haven't you? Yeah, I've just you? done um, Dracula, which is um, basically from Bram Stoker's novel with uh, Keanu Reeves and Anthony Hopkins. And Renona Ryder? Yep. The lady you wanted to meet. Was she, was she everything you expected? More. More. It's a nice Wonderful. person. Right, we're going to have an, a look at another bit um, from the film. Can you tell us a bit, a bit of the background to this? All right. Um, it's basically that uh, Christian goes to find Robin for Nottingham and then says to Robin, look, are you going to finish what you started? And so they hatch a plot to um, free the woodsmen, but I sort of screw it all up by attacking him. Right, and Christian Slater plays Will Scarlet. Yeah. Okay, let's have a look at the clip that Danny was just talking about. Watch out for Will Scarlet. He's got a thing over his face. Absolutely brilliant stuff. We've got another question now from Catherine. Were you happy with the, you happy with the performance in the film? Um, yeah, I was happy with what I did then, but um, I'd like to do something that's got a bit more to it than just, you know, running around shooting arrows and the sort of one line here and there. Can you believe he said this? Excuse me, Catherine, <laughs> I have to show you. He did win a junior Oscar. It actually says on here, Daniel Newman, best young actor, co-starring in a motion picture, Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. I think he deserves a round of applause. Yeah. 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 I'm just gonna move that out of the way because it's now time to talk about this wonderful competition that we've got. Daniel, if you stand up right. and give us a twirl. This jacket, Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves jacket. Okay, take a seat. With gold lining. With gold lining, of course. <laughs> it's up for grabs. You can right. answer this question. Okay, you got the right. question? Yep, Robin Hood has been done a number of times. Um, I'd like to know two people that have played the part of Robin Hood before. Right, and that's two people who've been on film or television. Yep, that's right. Okay, two people who have played the part of Robin Hood. The jacket is up for grabs, that's for the winner. And also the Robin Hood video book and t-shirt for five runners up. So get your entries in to Prince of Thieves competition. Motor Mouth, Pier Box One, Maidstone Kent. Amy 14, 5 L. Prince of Thieves competition, Motor Mouth, Pier Box One, Maidstone Kent. Amy 14, 5 L. Get your in entries in as soon as possible. Daniel Newman, thank you yeah. very much for joining us. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Guys, oh, come with me. Come with me. Oh, it's a good jacket. More of the same uh, next week, live at 9.25. He said consulting his script. What's on? Pasadena's are on the program. Oh. And you can also find out how we got on when we went to make the video with Take That, me and the girls. All oh, right. Well, we've got a bit of mousetrap, we've got a bit of beetle juice, and we've definitely got Scooby-Doo next yeah. week. Scooby-Doo-Doo-Doo-Doo. Michael, I've got pet fish. Okay, I know it's a problem. With apologies to everybody. Welcome to Motor Mouth. On this very auspicious occasion, the televising of the first ever Cardboard Cup final. Atmosphere down the pitch, quite electric at the moment. I have with me footballing expert Frank Sidebottom. Frank, uh, how are the players feeling just at this moment? Uh, they're up to Jupiter, Brian. Absolutely, very much so. Well, obviously, the company of stars have gathered to see this match, and if you look through the grandstand, you can see a famous face every second person. My goodness me, who could that be with Gabby Roslin? No, it's surely not. Good morning, yes, I'm very pleased to say we have Kylie Minogue in the studio. Kylie, what do you think the score's going to be in um, the match? Could you give me just a little more time? Oh! oh. Corny gag, number one on Motor Mouth. That's <laughs> well, there'll be plenty of corny references, as many uh, contrived commentators to references as I could get in as well this morning, like uh, the state of the pitch. They always talk about that, don't they? And our pitch is looking quite marvellous. That's doubtless due to the efforts of our wonderful grounds and Mr. Steve Johnson. Yeah. Hey, 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 well, it looks like we've had a bit of a worm invasion. But I've got a brilliant idea with something we could do with them later in the programme, and that isn't eating them. Back to you, Andy. Do you like worms? Do Very like much so, yes. Well, I wouldn't be quite so sure about that. You wouldn't be able to see the programme without the fantastic camera work of our boys. And uh, head of cameras this morning is Neil Buchanan. 
Oh, yes, thank you, Brian. Yes, now, if you thought that camera work was very good down there on the pitch, you ain't seen nothing yet. We've got some wildlife camera work later on from Tony Shepard, and we'll be going behind the scenes and see some of the tricks of the trade. But uh, now, I think things are hotting up down in the stadium, so back to you, Brian. Thanks very much indeed, Neil. Yes, we're yeah. just moments away now from kickoff. Oh, uh, the players are uh, electric. The you could cut the atmosphere with a knife down there in the stadium. Oh, some scissors. Very much so. But before the kickoff, this is what else is on the programme today. We kick off at uh, 9.35 with the Scooby-Doo cartoon. Scooby-Doo oh, is called the B Team. I'm going to oh. drop the silly voice now because I want to tell you that Mousetrap is back. Yeah! <laughs> By popular demand, especially by Steve Johnson. That's back at 10 o'clock this morning. At 10.15, Genesis. You like Genesis, don't you, Frank? Yeah, they're the super subs, aren't they? Yeah, they'll be, they may be making a late substitution from them. Certainly, yeah. well, Beetlejuice is very much a cartoon of two halves this morning. Yeah. The first half of our story is at half past 10. The second one comes a little later. And at, at 10 the 50, end of the day, at it's the end of the day, night, isn't it? Tony Shepard is an excellent wildlife cameraman. See his work at 10.50 when he talks to Neil. Live in the studio, Miss Kylie Minogue performs her brand new Kylie Minogue. Like Kylie Minogue, I kid you oh, not. The real one. The real Kylie Minogue. Oh, Give me just a little more time. At 20 past 11, you can meet a real live film star, Danny Newman. Does my hair look smooth? Your hair looks lovely, oh, Frank. Lovely. And at 11.25, our playout number this morning, live in the studio, we are joined by Cicero. And the boys. Right, Kyle well, we're approaching kickoff time now, so I can appoint myself referee and start to pick team captains. And the first team captain this morning is Little Frank, so I'll be playing for Little Frank now. Who else should I pick? Hey, Who? Mr. Max! Mr. Max! No, that's a good Get idea. Yes, over Little here. Frank can no, play no. Max. No, he's not playing him. You can be the bald boy. Make yourself useful. Go and get them balls. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're going to play me. All right, then, fine. Okay. Cardboard cup. The cardboard cup final. Little yeah. Frank against Big Frank. I will obviously flick for Little Frank. All right, and as the referee, don't catch you. Wow! What next? That's not all. We've got competitions galore. That sharp Sunday, new for Sundays on LWT. Stay sharp. And looking ahead to tomorrow evening at 6, Desmond Morris and Sarah Kennedy's travels take them to the Peterborough Dog Show. That's this week's visit to Animal Country, tomorrow at 6. Next today, the latest chart hits on video from the ITV Chart Show. Tonight at 6.15 on ITV, anything could happen in Blind Date. Oh, wow! Oh, my God! Oh, why don't you get air sick? Or maybe just sick of him. I'm also a final year at university, and I think you'd find that a night in with me would be an education in itself. And that's certainly true of Michael Barrymore. Thank you very much. Thank you. What? Thank you. What? Tonight on ITV. Back to this morning and at 12.30, we've comedy horror in the Munsters today. But first, here on London Weekend Television, in Nykamp Stereo, the best sounds around from the ITV chart show.